In this first design iteration, we focus on energy awareness. This includes not only awareness for householders, but also for us, designers and researchers, to get a clearer picture of energy behaviors in the home. So here we are. In the first stage of the data-centric design process, with 75 household to instrument. It started with smart meters, measuring what is consumed and generated, but also what is imported from and exported to the, the electricity grid. We'll come back to that later. A large number of appliances were monitored with smart plugs. These are devices coming between the power socket and the appliance to report the electricity consumption. There was also the Internet of Things gateway receiving all the data via Z-Wave, a wireless protocol, and transmitting it to Eon servers via the Internet. And finally, there were sensors deployed to capture the temperature and humidity in each house. All right, so this is how it looks like all together. With this infrastructure, we monitor the energy streams overall. There's the generation coming from the roof, from the solar panels. Then what is exported to the electricity grid. Typically, every time the solar panels produce more than the house is consuming, then without battery, there is no other solution but to export electricity to the grid. The other way is also true. When the house is consuming more than it generates, then it pumps electricity from the grid. And here, there is what we call an inverter to orchestrate all these different streams. It leaves us with consumption, electricity consumption, that is equal to electricity generation plus imported electricity from the grid minus exported electricity to the grid. So that's our electricity overview. Nowadays, there are clever algorithms that can transform this meter data into a breakdown per appliances. In our case, we had the smart plugs, as I mentioned, reporting the consumption from each appliance. This data flows through the gateway and the internet to the Eon server to be stored and accessed by Eon smartphone and web apps. At the time of the project, I was conducting this research at the Open University. On the right-hand side, you can see our part of the infrastructure. There was a black box provided by Eon, just a, a small piece of software that we run every few minutes to gather their data. Not the hacking part here. This is absolutely not the proper way to collect data. But when prototyping, you have to deal with what's made available to you to access the, da the data. This gave us CSV files, typical format for exchanging data, and a Java program pushing this data in a database. Of course, this stage is not only about sensors, but a good deal of informal interaction with householders, all of them having some fun showing us their solar panel infrastructure, all pretty pioneers and tech savvy at that time. So we have a collection infrastructure now. We move on the data exploration stage. For this iteration, it turned out to be mainly monitoring and visualizing raw data. It took about a year to robustly and reliably collect data from most participants. The design and implementation stage here of the sensing infrastructure was really integral part of the design process. What can we see here on this chart? Well, the data from one household for two days in red, the consumption that we've just calculated in green, the generation coming from the solar panels. We can see the bell shape of the generation following the sun daily cycle, 
The first day on the left is a bit more spiky, impacted by the cloudy weather, potentially. The consumption is regular for most part of the day with a significant increase toward the evening. What we can note here, I think that's the most important, that's the energy gap. The red line is far from matching the green line. Consumption does not happen at the, the same time as generation. Here's another glance at the data. Again, to check our understanding, be surprised by the look at, of the data and see connections between the different data streams. This is one day this time for one household. The outer line in red at, at the top is the overall power consumption. We can see regular consumption like the, the refrigerator here on the, the left hand side, some breakfast and also dinner spikes, maybe some tea late in the evening, a very British household. And then after dinner, these two larger spikes are typical from a dishwater pattern, posing for a moment before the second part of the cycle. In purple, we have also in the middle, this is the, the washing machine cycle. This one we know for sure because of the smart plug monitoring this appliance separately. It helps validating the data by checking, for instance, that the overall consumption is always higher than the individual appliance consumption. Looking below the x-axis, the outer line in green this time represents the local electricity generation, th this coming from the solar panels, the cloudiness indication explained the drop in generation. Here we had about 32% cloudiness around 4 p.m. And then we have the blue area. That is what has been exported to the grid because the house consumption was lower. So by deduction, what we call self-consumption here in green is what is generated and consumed locally at the same time. You note that it is only a small part of the generation which highlights again the mismatch between the generation and the consumption. This exploration triggered a deeper analysis of the four energy streams over a longer period. On this chart, we can see eight months of data across all households, the energy in kilowatt hours consumed, generated, exported to the grid, and imported from the grid, and it's an average per day. Looking at eight months gives us a sense of seasonality. We can observe that consumption in red and generation in green are well balanced around the summer on the left side and much less in winter towards the right hand side with more consumption and much less generation. The days are shorter and uh, weather probably more cloudy. More importantly, zooming over the summer months, we note that imports and exports are still very high. This confirm the insight from the previous chart across a num large number of days and households. So in the context of local generation, that brings us to the fourth stage. The value proposition is no longer about reducing electricity consumption, but rather consuming electricity when it is generated. And by intuition, in the middle of the day when the sun is shining. That became our design goal, supporting householders to shift their energy consumption to period of the day when solar energy is at its highest. In co-design session, householders and designers created initial data visualization, which emphasize 
the needs for connecting electricity consumption and electricity generation. On this drawing, the idea of breaking down the overall energy consumption per appliance was a strong need for the participants to better understand which appliances consume the most and though which appliance can match better the electricity generation. So the design concept, as naive as it can sound, was about creating energy awareness so that householders can realize which appliances they run at a non-optimal moment, hoping they, they would change the habit. These design sessions led to the realization of a dedicated device showing instant electricity consumption and generation and a web and mobile app to provide a breakdown of consumption per appliance. Here we can see on the left this little device sitting on the cupboard showing a meter and energy in several units. At the time, it is worth mentioning that the design was also very influenced by an overwhelming literature on energy feedback and materialization. Deploying this dedicated device quickly emphasized the complexity of the relationship between generation and consumption. Logs could be used to look at the number of time participants logged in the app and look at the energy data or how many times they interacted with the dedicated device. The feedback sessions confirmed the analytics. Participants engaged with the tools at the beginning, learned more about their energy consumption, and then they mainly stopped interacting with it. Most of these participants with solar panels were pioneers and actively engaging in what we could say doing their bits for the planets. Some argued, well, why not exporting electricity to the grid? It's green after all. So at this stage, the problem appeared much more complicated than a focus on energy awareness. So let's wrap up this design iteration. We've deployed equipment such as smart plugs, smart meters, IoT gateway. Then we've looked at raw data, questioning, fine-tuning and validating the data coming from the infrastructure. We've conducted deeper analysis, aggregating data, comparing overall energy streams, emphasizing opportunity for self-sufficiency. We went on with the co-design sessions, householders and designers creating together initial data visualizations. These insights were used to realize a dedicated device showing instant and past consumption and generation to create awareness. This highlighted the not-so-straightforward relationship between generation and consumption. That's it for now. I hope it gives you already more concrete ideas about how to use data throughout the design process. Next up, a second design iteration with data-centric activities building on our conclusion. The focus should be on connecting consumption and generation.